Is this real life? Are the Minnesota Wild actually one of the top teams in the National Hockey League to start the season? Here we are, baby. Let's go. Kirsten and I take a look as to why the Minnesota Wild have found success and some areas that still need to be cleaned up. Plus, we look around the Central Division and have to wonder, is this the year Colorado finally falls off? As always, we're created by New Voice Studios, brought to you by Soda Stick, presented by Talk North, Livia, Grain Belt, Royal Credit Union, and Jim Beam. This is Season 6, Episode 252. At Jim Beam, they know the importance of tradition, like chanting, let's play hockey prior to the start of each game or playing the state of hockey anthem after a wild win. This season, raise one to your fan family with the bourbon that invites us all to come as friends and leave as family. Jim Beam Bourbon Whiskey, the official bourbon whiskey partner of the Minnesota Wild and XL Energy Center. Drink smart. Jim Beam Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey. 40% alcohol by volume. Copyright 2021. James B. Beam Distilling Company Incorporated. Fairmont, Kentucky. Looking for the best lumber in the game and want to celebrate one of Minnesota's local legends while doing so? Well, Soda Stick has come out with their latest design, Celebrating Both. That's right. The Paul Bunyan Hockey Stick launch just dropped last week. You've got t-shirts, hoodies, crew necks, waffle knit hats, all of the fun celebrating Paul Bunyan and the sport of hockey. Can't go wrong with Soda Stick as always. They've got unique, creative designs, t-shirts, sweatshirts, jerseys, anything that you could possibly want. Go get it now at SodaStick.com. Don't forget to use Bar Down Beauties as your code when you check out for 15% off all purchases. Again, that's SodaStick.com. Shop away. Get into the game. Hello, everybody. What's up? We're back. Bar Down Beauties, episode 252. I'm your host, Jesse Pierce. She's your other host, Kirsten Kroll. Uh, what's going on, Kirsten? Happy Monday. A pretty good weekend. I'm feeling good after the weekend. It was a solid weekend. Aside from the fact I, I broke my back and I didn't do anything. It's because I'm old. And literally, that's the only reason. Like, I had to have an urgent care doctor tell me, like, oh, well, according to your birth date, you're old. And that's just going to happen to your life. So now I'm on steroids and in pain. We're getting through it. I love that for you. Um, happy Monday. I am here with a smile on my face. I'm peppy. Look, it's it. a great day. It's going to be a great week. I'm so happy. She's back. She's Mainly back. because I, y'all, I saw all of those applications for my job. I take notes. I don't forget. I'm coming for you. So <gasps> sleep with one eye open. That's all the I'm amount of people I might be happy, that... but I do keep. I don't bury the hatchet. Maybe I do, but I keep maps of where I put them. So I'm coming for you guys. You just don't know when. (laughs) The amount of people that were like, there was genuine concern, but then there was also like, can you just get it together? Like, can you not be so down? Like, you know what? It'd be like that sometimes. Sometimes the puck bounces your way. Sometimes it doesn't. That's, that's good. I like, she's back. Ladies and gentlemen, Kirsten Kroll, everybody. Welcome. (laughs) And mini the dab. dab. Mini to, dab. Uh, mini dab. I just really, I almost dab or I almost dapped, not dabbed. I almost dapped Mitch Marner last night when I walked past him just because he'd probably be like, what? And I would just wanted to do it. Probably. But also crazy. just a moment of appreciation for William Nylander just because <laughs> no particular he reason. He mumbles so badly. Like that's the true reason. Like, I'll be honest. I'm always trying to slip in that guerrilla marketing with the bar down beauties. Um, pop socket acknowledgement in videos Mm. with NHL players. You'll see it more often in the wild videos. And I was trying to do it with the Toronto Maple Leafs. And I had to literally get so close to Willie's mouth. That sounds terrible out of context. Um, I I had to get so close because he mumbles so bad. So that's why I was able to get the bar down buttes in on that Toronto feed there. uh, Because Willie is a soft spoken gentleman. And we love that for him. What a man. After watching the NHL documentary, episode of Nylander and pasta I'm in love with Nylander fair that's fair uh, how could you not really? be he's a dog dad like come on do you love him more than Mitch though Mitchie's like absolutely his yeah dad. I do love oh. Nylander more than Marner that's not even a hot take <laughs> absolutely Marner I respect him as the dog father he is that's about it okay that's fair uh we're talking about the Toronto Maple Leafs because the Minnesota Wild defeated the Maple Leafs in overtime yesterday. Um, 
obviously we're not going to dive into the games, but a ton to get into with the Minnesota Wild. There's no reason to be sad this week because your Minnesota Wild are right now third best in the NHL with an 8-1-2 and two record, 18 points. They sit second in the central behind the Winnipeg Jets, who are, Jets, excuse me, who are also leading the NHL with an 11-1-0 and one and o record. The Florida Panthers, defending cup champs, are 9-3-1. and one. Um, We're about 15% into the season, right? Again, still a long way to go. A lot can change. And I know there's so much excitement surrounding the start, considering how bad it was last year. But right now, Kirsten, your Minnesota Wild are on pace for 134 points. Last year, they finished with 87 points. Let's compare that a little bit. But that has to beg the question, like, are you, how much are you buying into where this Minnesota Wild team is at and how successful they truly can be because it seems like not even there's excitement not even just here in St. Paul and in the state of hockey but across the league like I think they've really taken the league by storm this year and everyone's paying attention not just because of Kirill but just in general as a team so I have to ask is it real like or are we just holding our breath and waiting for the other shoe to drop because again 15 percent a lot of season left Wild, not so mild to start the 24-25 season, am I right? But no, we will be for real if we can score on the power play. And that's all I'm going to say about that. <laughs> we'll get into the concerns. But I know I I have this belief like there is it does feel like there's something special. I look at it as some of these games. I mean, first of all, you have the road trip that you were incredibly successful on. You have the road trip that you were successful on, despite missing your captain, Jared Spurgeon, who really showed out in the game against Toronto, helping get that puck up to Boldy after he hustled back. So, I mean, I think what, what a goal. A uh. what, a, what a sound mind. And it's funny because I spoke with him after uh, the game and. I said, you know, what were you seeing? He's like, I just wanted to get back to where I was comfortable, AKA back into the defensive zone. Right. Like, so, I mean, he wasn't really necessarily monitoring that, but he did know he's like, I knew they were going to kind of try to chip it in and he was able to hustle back. So, I mean, you love to see that out of a guy who is almost 35 years old and obviously has been enduring Mm -hmm. some uh, repercussions from his injury last year. When I I am on my deathbed, I want the Spurgeon feed to Boldy to the back of the net to be played on loop. No, I need the Kirill Kaprizov to Jules Eric's neck from Friday night. Mm. You played on loop because my, even, even Ecker, who I've told you before is he's kind of quiet. I mean, he just kind of doesn't usually give you much, but I had, when I asked him, I said, man, that was a hell of a pass from Kirill and a beauty goal by you. Even he was kind of like, yeah, well, like the play itself was just like, mm, so good. So good. Let me just. For a moment oh I thought you like actually drooled and I was like get it together no. woman <laughs> just falling apart no and it's not what... me today for the record I'm I am together. very much together today besides like a broken back I'm very together I so. don't believe that it's true I never <laughs> you're drooling that. you got a herniated disc <laughs> like the bulging <laughs> herniated disc what a terrible sounding thing too and like literally there's nothing I, I bent over to pick up a frozen pizza that for whatever reason, my three-year-old decided to throw out of the freezer onto the floor. And I was like, oh, I'm just going to pick this up like a human. How can and she reach the freezer? It's one of those, it's a pull out on the bottom. Oh, mm. I was like up top. How did she get up oh, there? Oh, she's a monkey she... as well. I mean, she could have, it wouldn't have been completely out of the realm. Like the amount of times you'll find a child standing on my counters, digging into a cupboard is, is not far and few between. But back to my point at hand, if you don't mind, uh, the Minnesota Wild, I, the reason I have some confidence in that this team is being special, it's not the individual accolades, which we'll get into, but it's the way, the way that they have been winning. They've done it both ways. Now you saw them be stingy and really shut down Toronto and, and play well, despite Kirill being held off the score sheet for the first time in seven games, his point streak ending, but he's done some incredible stuff. Um, I think that's really what excites me like they can do it on both ends and you're seeing the scoring depth we talked about the scoring depth last week it just it's hard to not get excited for them and feeling like this is real like I don't know that it's a poser thing now again you have to stay healthy things have to continue to go this way but I'm kind of feeling it I'm vibing with it let me vibe for a minute you're allowed to vibe yeah I just know that song catch my vibe catch a vibe no it's a really, it's a way better song. It's, I'll play it for you guys right now. We're going to get like a copyright. Can we get a copyright <laughs> on it? If you only play like a, probably. I hear literally nothing. 
I'm feeling like the city boys up one. Made a way full course, step, step, son. Go in the jam where he get that seven. I just said, she's trying to ride it. I'm like, yeah, um, get in. I don't know her name, but she fit in with the other bad women. I can't see- wait for the copyright tag on this whole Hold episode. On, no, thank you, Jesse. You're done. Put the phone away. <laughs> You're done. And then, then it goes, hey, let me vibe for a minute. Hey. Let me vibe for a You're minute. You're no longer allowed to vibe. Your minute is up. You're done. It went a little longer than necessary. It definitely went a little longer. And considering I couldn't hear half of you hey, playing. Let me vibe for You're a You're done. Minute. We're moving I recommend on. Y'all. Recommend what you all. What were we even talking about before? You're done. This I'm vibing with the team. Yeah, it's true. Well, I'm just saying. I'm vibing with it. Let's break down some of the reasons I'm vibing with it. We're going to start with Philip Gustafson guys. I'm going to go ahead and start there. We love us some good goaltending. I love being harsh on the goaltenders, but when they are good, baby, I, they are good. I am all aboard last year's Minnesota wild goaltending tandem finished 24th in team save percentage with a 0.893 through just 11 games and all, but two have been played by Philip Gustafson. They are third in the league with a 0.914 save percentage. They are ranked third in goals against by allowing just 2.42. Um, Love it. Like that is a big thing. Philip Gustafson swallowing pucks, controlling rebounds. He's got his confidence back. Um, I can't say enough good things. And I think he's finally taken hold. That was what we wanted last year. Last year, you needed Philip Gustafson to be able to play all the games, but to and slot Mark Andre Fleury in when you needed him. And Mark Andre Fleury has been serviceable, right? I mean, it's I don't necessarily get nervous when he's in there, but Philip Gustafson, man, like he's he wanted that bounce back. We wanted him to utilize maybe some of his anger or animosity from this off season. And he's doing just that. He's literally like mindset, like, look at me now. Like you guys all doubted me and here I am. I'm worthy of the contract I received enough with your criticism enough with saying I deserve to be an AHL goaltender. (laughs) Yeah. I throwing that back into the mix. I said back up too. Yeah, you did. (laughs) <laughs> and I was trying to give you a little bit of credit and you're digging yourself. Back I'll, no, but hey, I'll, I'll own it. Right. Like, that's fine. I will. I'll, I will always, like I said, happily eat crow when I need to, because I, I want to see the success. I don't want to actually bad. eat crow for the bit. Ew. Although there's that crow <laughs> you know? at the golf course that I wouldn't mind killing who steals my chips. Like he has it coming. Yeah. They're smart. Crows are smart animals. Yeah, they are. Very smart, actually very intelligent, which mm-hmm. is just odd to think about. Mm-hmm. Um, so Philip Gustafson, he's the first one we need to talk about. Then we need to talk about Kirill Kaprizov. Give mm-hmm. that man the heart. There is absolutely no way he's not a finalist for the heart trophy this year. Last year, uh, the team in general was 21st in goals per game with 2.98. They are eighth this season with 3.68 per game. Um, 41 goals scored so far throughout the 11 game sample. And a large part of that is thanks to our friend Kirill Kaprizov, who has 21 points in 11 games played. Um, Just a tremendous, tremendous start for Kirill. There's not enough that you can say about the way that he is playing, even when he's held off the score sheet like he was in Toronto. As we mentioned, that streak coming to an end, he's still contributing. He's still being Kirill and getting out there. Even when we spoke with him after the Toronto or excuse me, after the Tampa Bay game on Friday, he was quick to say, well, yeah, but I didn't like our first period. Right. Like he's always going to try and be better and better um, currently leading the NHL in points. First one to get to 20 points in, in the season, Kirill Kaprizov, man, like good God, man is on a bender this year, or it may be benders, not the right word. He's on a tear, no, a tear. tear. That's, that's what it is. It's definitely a tear. A <laughs> I don't ever suggest. see Kirill being a man that goes on a bender, but maybe now I'm I asked him about if he that. celebrated now... Halloween and he's not, he said it's a different religion in Russia. And I wanted to be like, it's not a religious thing. Some Just people... Maybe he hates Satan. <laughs> right? Like that's maybe what he was trying to say. Honestly, that probably is what he was trying to say. Um, then he said, I just don't really like candy that much either. And I was like, Fair. I also don't like candy, but like, I love Halloween. Like I used to go trick or treating and just go to every house and get candy. I wouldn't even eat. And my mom brought that up the other day. She's like, you don't even eat candy. And yet, like, you love yeah. trick-or-treating. And I'm like, I can't explain it. I think it was just, like... For you, it's the costumes. It the costumes, but also, I don't know, trick-or-treating was kind of like a competition. Like, how much candy can I get that I'm not going to eat? I don't know. Fair. Love Halloween. Yeah, I go back and forth on candy, but I, like, some like lately, my big kick is I've 
talked about extensively probably too much has been like the chewy candy or the fruity candy or like the nerd gummy clusters those are really mm. good or like Swedish fish or I can't do gummies because I literally the texture will make me throw up on the spot see I just and I never could it wasn't a thing it's something that's happened within the past like two years it's very bizarre for me and a good chocolate like I don't love chocolate bars I don't love Snickers I don't love any of that um and I'm sorry but unpopular opinion i hate reese's peanut butter cups i just don't mm. like them i don't like the texture i know that's like everyone's favorite i don't like them but um philip gustafson gave me one of his swedish candies it's called like doom Dumo. i don't know ecker was trying to help me say it but it basically is like a rollo but with much better chocolate because american chocolate sucks like it was so much better just strictly because the milk chocolate like i could get behind chocolate yeah. if it was good chocolate like they i do not like candy i do not like chocolate but we love Halloween. Anyways, back to Kirill Caprisa. <laughs> back to Kirill, who is not scaring us, but giving us all the candy. Oh, you see what I did there? Bring it on back. Yeah. Well, I'll treat you have tricks, that. but some cool tricks too. We'll let you run with that. <laughs> Please say your say your point. Do you want to say your thoughts on Kirill? Kirill's the man. Like, like I was saying, he's on a tear to start the year. Oh, yeah. Um Please. I the early conversation, everything that I've seen, especially from analysts, uh, media personalities from across the entire NHL in contention for the heart right now. So I don't know, maybe yeah. we manifested something when we went to the Dynamites fundraiser and each got pictures with the keeper of the Stanley Cup and pictures with the heart trophy. Maybe we manifested something. Oh, I hadn't even considered that. That's yeah, now I am. Point. Yeah. I mean, it was a, a matter of time, right? Like, I don't think us here in Minnesota had ever questioned what a special player Kirill is. Again, for me, it's not even just the way in which he scores. It's the way that he views the game, his hockey IQ, mm -hmm. the way he moves the puck, the way he can kind of do it all. And the way he's such a goddamn workhorse, too. Like, I mm -hmm. love that more than anything. Like, I know Sidney Crosby does it, Connor McDavid too, Nathan McKinnon. Like, you're all hard workers as well as being talented, but he takes it to just a different level because I think it's that grittiness that he plays with, too, and just that very decisive kind of hard-hitting game that he has. Well, also, too, and I think of Kirill being a hard worker, I just literally, the one image that comes in my mind is him in Russia training in the offseason just flipping huge tractor tires. <laughs> And I still, I can't, I, I, I have almost, I've imagined it so much that I've almost convinced myself it's real, which is like the Mandela effect, right? Like I'm convinced it's real that there was like a bear there, like chasing him or so, or that he was going to mud wrestle a bear. Like I've convinced myself no, of this Kirill image. No, Kirill Kaprizov would run into a bear and the bear would look at him and be like, respect and turn the opposite direction. Like that's what would happen. Right? Like, oh, incredible. Um, Yeah, there's, it's just, it's nice to see him finally get that national recognition right like it's it's us here in minnesota we love to be more than just a flyover state so it's nice to be like see we have good things here good things that we want to keep here see because then that's your i'm sorry i'm gonna say it, that's gonna be your problem now everybody's like oh yeah we could really use a krill yeah so but according to craig leopold no one will offer more money than us also meanwhile i do just have this picture of krill just staring at me right now on my desk <laughs> Oh, it's terrifying but he like night. kind of has like that little smile on his face too like he can't just do like a scary straight face it's just like there's a little smirk and like the eyes are like twinkling a little bit too mm, so i had that staring at me the whole time meanwhile like also the jared spurgeon and marcus Felino. now i keep looking at this i'm gonna flip this over you should flip that over please it's flipped put it away just please put it away it's, um, it's away on the same note Marco Rossi, another player that I can eat crow about. Although again, I wanted to trade him because he's valuable and I still look at it as like, that still is a conversation that probably could be had, but I feel like this is going to be another really big breakout year. Uh, Marco Rossi rose to the occasion last year. Now he's getting the opportunity to play between Kirill and Matt Zuccarello. He's got three goals, seven assists and his plus six through 11 games played. He's averaging nearly 17 minutes a night. And he trails Kirill by only two points in five on five scoring. And in fact, is only the second center in the league behind Jack Eichel, who has produced more five on, or Jack Eichel, excuse me. It's the only center who's produced more five on five than Marco. It does. It feels Marco's the good finisher, right? Like if we're talking peanut butter and jelly for Zuki and Kirill, like he's the bread that puts it, binds it all right. Like Ryan Hartman kind of played that role a little bit, but. Marco ha does it with more skill, frankly, right? And, and I don't think Ryan Hartman would disagree with that. Like, he's just able 
to complement those two because it's got to be it's so hard the problem that you've always had with Zuki and Kirill is finding that complementary piece that can also keep up with them because they're quick and the way that their minds work you have to find somebody there and Marco can do that and he's I have a feeling that this is going to be even a better year than he had last year I mean you said everything that I would say nothing but good things to say about Marco Rossi he's picking up exactly where he left off last season and continuing to build on it as well taking on a bigger role this year you can see that he's more comfortable out there too uh, my only complaint is I need him to stay out of the box. And I don't mind if he just pops in there once in a while. Because again, I think he brings some of that grittiness that you need. I know you. Hate I that love word. the grittiness, but maybe it's just fresh in my mind because the penalty last night against Toronto was when Rossi was in the box and then William Nylander just was doing Nylander things. So I think maybe that's also fresh in my mind, but I just feel he has spent a little more time in there than I would have liked to start the year. Yeah. And our special teams, while they're not struggling as much as last year, I'm still not no, you thoroughly can't. impressed. We can't. That's I have that point for. I'm sorry. I'm bringing it up Please. now. We'll trickle no. into it later. But I'm break. just saying. After the break, don't I, don't ruin this for me. I have. I'm sorry. I'm not going into detail. I just mentioned it. A little foreshadowing for what's to come. Shh. Oh. Uh, let's <laughs> nasty this morning. Gosh. <laughs> wow <laughs> i was on one we had our vikings i always do my vikings record for score north go listen to before i die on purple daily um and i was real sassy on that one this morning too i had a lot i had a lot of things to say don't but harsh my I should, vibe i should point out that the vikings started winning when i started watching so hmm. interesting probably not Definitely. i'm gonna say it's a coincidence it's probably not a coincidence gonna bring you back like... down to reality it's my job. Uh, That's why the, no one else can take my uh -huh. spot. Mm -hmm. The reality also is, again, another player that I need to prop up that I don't know we've done. John Merrill. John mm. Merrill's been playing very well. Declan Chisholm's been playing very well. I kind of like that they're getting, you know, I asked John Hines about that the other day. Is It's a rotation. It's a good problem to have. The Minnesota Wild currently have a very good problem in the fact that all their players are performing up to par that you can't get everybody in. It's a numbers game, right? You send Liam Ogren down to the American Hockey League, which I think was the right move. Um, you have Ryan Hartman that comes back. All of a sudden, you got one guy out. You'd rather have Liam Ogren playing than sitting out, and then you've got a seventh defenseman. But John Merrill, I think, has been playing very well. I think Declan Chisholm's playing well, and there's that rotation between the two of them. And then suffice to say, Brock Faber, who is still fifth in the league in ice time with 25 minutes and 28 seconds total so each course. game. It's insane. That is insane. Um, and then Jared Spurgeon back and healthy Middleton doing his thing. Congrats to him and his wife for baby girl Stevie being born. My favorite um, thing, just we're going to segue for a second yeah. when he was being interviewed. He, I believe it was yesterday and wild social put it out to congratulate him and his wife. And he's like, yep, Stevie. And then he tries to spell it and he goes, yeah, yeah he's I like, think I that's right. This, and I'm like, oh my gosh, it. we were all like, you're going to have to learn that, I guess. And then. The follow-up was uh, somebody said Brent Burns spelled his daughter's name wrong at one point in time, like didn't know how to spell his kid's name for a minute. And Middleton knows Burns, obviously, from their time with the Sharks. And he's like, yeah, that doesn't surprise. And that shouldn't surprise anybody that Brent Burns would forget how to spell a name. It's no, new. Honestly, it's a new though, human. You don't know that human yet, so it's fine. No, I mean, yes, fair. But I just thought it was really funny. I'm like, this is the most midsy thing, so nonchalant. But also, especially for a daughter for them, just knowing Midzi, not knowing like anything about his wife, but I can imagine she's super cool because Midzi's super cool. Right. I can't imagine them naming their daughter anything else besides Stevie. It like seems Stevie so fits. fitting. Yeah, I agree. I think that's an adorable name. So agreed. Love it. Congrats. Congratulations. Congrats to them. Um, but yeah, in in general, the defense playing really well too. And I think we can be very much less concerned about Jared Spurgeon and where he's at and his recovery right I mean it's been looking good in his couple game return so far you know what yeah we're we're thinking positive thoughts we're putting positive energy out into the atmosphere today this week moving forward life is good we're happy the defense so is fantastic so far this year another name you forgot to mention is Jonas Brodeen I will not let you I wanted you leave. to mention it okay I well I am mention. so Jonas okay. Brodeen also huge on our defense. Last year, I was very critical of our defense. I'm very analytical, critical. I don't know why I said analytical. <laughs> that was not what I meant to say. <laughs> Start dropping stats all of a sudden. <laughs> I'm just a well of knowledge over here. Fair. No, defense, 
no notes. I'm happy. I'm happy. Yeah. <sighs> <laughs> it's been said. It has been said. That's going to be the opening of our highlight reel this week. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I agree. I. It's good. Things are good, guys. This is good. Let's enjoy it. Let's just enjoy this. Um, you know, we hope it will last longer. And I do. I feel like the, this recipe is there to be successful. I just, it, it's good. There's no excuses moving forward, knowing that with the roster and the team that we have, this is what they're capable of. We know what they're capable of now. Mm -hmm. There's no reason we right. can't continue this. 100%. Good. We're going to take a quick break when we come back. Some of the concerns we have, which Kirsten has basically already spelled out, but maybe we'll talk about it a little bit. I didn't go into more. detail. I just mentioned. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, we can see if people were actually paying attention anyway. Well, you know what? This uh, is a test for everybody. Um, if you guys were actually paying attention to anything me and Jesse said, what's a code word people can comment in the comments? Ooh, I love this. Uh -huh. um, um, power play. I mean, just power play. Yeah, just comment power play. If yeah. you are PP actually will allow PP a power play. <laughs> yeah. I <laughs> I always call it a PP. Yeah, you're going on yep. the PP. Okay, I've never heard you say that before, and I'm uncomfortable. We don't <laughs> talk about power plays that much. <laughs> yes, we do. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna talk more about it in the second half. Comment power play if you were actually paying attention. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. That. Hey guys, Jesse Pierce here for Livia Weight Control Centers. Are you ready to lose weight for good? Join Livia's nutrition plan today and receive your first eight weeks absolutely free. Since 2009, Livia has been the weight loss leader. And whether you're looking for a holistic approach through a customized nutrition program or seeking out a medical option, Livia's got you covered. You're not only going to lose weight, you'll learn how to keep it off for good. In fact, you could lose up to 20 pounds or more in those first eight weeks. Take it from me. I've been with Livia for a little more than a year, dropped 40 pounds, and have kept that 40 pounds off thanks to the one-on-one -on -one guided support and nutrition program that Livia has to offer. So why would you settle for anything less than the best? Livia has been voted the number one in weight loss year after year. Visit Livia.com, that's L-I-V-E-A.com, or call 855-GO-LIVIA and get your eight weeks absolutely free. Plus, when you join, Livia Medical Semi-Glutide is just $199 in your first month. It's a limited time only. Visit Livia.com or call 855-GO-LIVIA. All right, we're back. As we had alluded to very softly in the first half, special teams still are a point of large concern for your Minnesota Wilds. Uh, two games in a row, both against Tampa Bay Lightning and Toronto power play struggled to get going. 0 for 3 on Sunday against the Maple Leafs, allowing that power play goal, as Kirsten said, by Willie Nylander. And Toronto's power play is not good. Like they are, it is very bad. So you can't. Okay, I will really say like though, that was a beautiful goal from Nylander. And the fact sure. he didn't even react, like right. he just stood there after, like, I believe it was like a one timer on the net and it just went. Like it was beautiful. It was one -timer. Yeah, it was, it was beautiful. And he just stood there and I think he pointed and I was like, wow, like that was a good goal. Like I couldn't, yes. I was mad, but like I couldn't be that mad. No. Um, and that's because the penalty kill stinks still they are 31st at a 65.2 percent efficiency rate remember last year they finished 30th i'm a little more worried because again that was such a high point of emphasis heading into the season you fire darby hendrickson you bring in jap cap capion cap i called him jack cappuccino the other day jack cap capiano capino you bring in coach you're doing jack. amazing sweetie I don't know why it's so hard. Like some of the names that I struggle with, I don't, I will never understand why I struggle with them, but I do. You're doing your best. I'm doing my best. Uh, but they bring him in to help with the PK and it's still not good. Like I don't Put like me that. in. It's going to be me practice running drills with them and I'll just blow the whistle. and I'll be like, again, mm. again, yeah. like until we get it right again true well and then they take spurge off the pk and naturally you had to do that while he was away but they haven't put him back on and it's kind of like i wonder if that's the right move in either way that's the one area i need focused on for the next few practices minimally right because you can't you cannot finish at the bottom again you can't finish worse than you did last year apparently you can literally but you need to change that dynamic for sure you can't win. I mean, right now we are, but like you can't make a run if you can't perform on special teams. 
Right. Like the power play, I'm less concerned with. It is two games that you're kind of like, huh, that's odd that they're not able to get it done because they were just cracking them off at the beginning of the year. Mm -hmm. Um, And it's your top unit is a absolute bombshell, right? Like it's just so good. But the PK, yeah, we need to finish that. Speaking of bad too, let's take a peek across the central, shall we? Because it's kind of fun. Please. Um, are the Colorado Avalanche bad? Because they yes. are five seven and zero. Oh. They are in seventh place in the Central, ahead of the lowly Nashville Predators, who are four six and one. Although Nashville is on the up and up, they are four one and one in their last six. And the Avs have a ridiculous list of injury. They're missing six of their top ten forwards, including Ross Colton, Miles Wood, Lekkinen, Nishkinen, Druin, Landeskog. I mean, I'll give them a little bit of grace there, but like, are they bad? I, this year, it wouldn't surprise me if this is the year that Colorado finally does falter? Or do you think that they'll be able to get it in? Again, only 15% of the way through the season. Still a small sample size. But as we, as the Minnesota Wild found out last year, you cannot dig yourself into no. a bad hole because you can't get out. It's not looking great, especially when the Wild are performing as well as they are. Unfortunately, Dallas, being Dallas, Winnipeg, you can't fall behind. You can't. Do you think Winnipeg's going to like keep this up? Like how no. sustainable are they? It's not I sustainable. I don't it's think the it is. same team though. Last year, Winnipeg had like 110 points and right now they're on pace for like 150, right? Okay. Well, let's not forget when the wild also had a hundred w- whatever points a couple seasons ago. They made the playoffs though. Yeah. So, but I'm just, but I, but I wonder <laughs> like Winnipeg's returning a lot of the same roster as last year so it's not crazy i guess to think that they could duplicate what they did last season but yeah i'm wondering i'm a hater and i'm not convinced (laughs) and i we've all been praying for colorado's demise and i think we're starting to see it yeah so if they need to you know start looking at a rebuild if you know they need nathan mckinnon off their hands kill mccarr if they're looking to you know trade in trade out we'll take them you imagine landeskog we'll take landeskog too do you take or no 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 I, i take that back I want Rantanen. Landeskog, yes. sorry. Yeah. Rantanen. Landeskog's, I can't trust him to be healthy. No. We'll take McKinnon, Makar, Rantanen. We'll Could you him. imagine McKinnon and Jewel, like Jewel Eric's neck and Pro oh. Kaprizov and Matt Boldy? Insane. Uh, oh, there's that drool again. Excuse me. Now I'm drooling. Right? Right? Kale Makar paired with like a Jonas Brodeen. Can you imagine? Kale McCarr with a Brock Faber. I mean, that's just the best pairing you'd ever have. You, you know would what? never do that because you need to spread it out. But We got options. Oh, God. Incredible. Absolutely. I feel green is a good color on kale as well. Probably. Because, like, kale's a vegetable. <laughs> green. <laughs> Oh boy. Um, yeah, before we go down that hole, let's uh let's look at the wild week ahead. Uh Minnesota closes out their three game homestand today that you're listening to this against LA Kings, then embark on a three game road trip against a very favorable schedule. The San Jose Sharks on Thursday, the Anaheim Ducks on Friday, Chicago Blackhawks on Sunday. Kirsten, how are we doing? How are they gonna do? <clears throat> well, I got my schedule because I kind of already forgot what you had just listed off. I said LA, Kings. San Jose, Anaheim, Chicago. Yes. <clears throat> yep. Oof. You know what? I believe we go three and one. Same as I think we'll get wins against Chicago, Anaheim, San Jose, but LA might be the one we drop. I'm not loving LA to start the year, but I just right. saying we're going to go four and oh is a hefty like a lot. it's a big ask since we i think about- realistically we could yeah. like but i i don't know i just think that's a hefty ask but this could be a good stretch for mm-hmm. minnesota but i'm gonna say three and one my my gut instinct is exactly what you're saying that you fall to la and then you win the other three but then my other part of me is like you might drop that game against Anaheim, right? Or you might drop, like one of those, because that tends to happen. Teams that you're supposed to beat, that doesn't always yeah. mean that you're going to beat them, right? Sometimes you play down to their level. Luckily, we haven't seen the Wild do that yet this year, no. really. Honestly, right? I think if they do lose one of those very tangible games, I would raise you Chicago as opposed to Anaheim. Chicago. The only reason to say Anaheim, it's a back-to-back with travel. Not yeah, fair. Travel, but, but yeah, I'd say, okay, yeah. 
looking at that, but three and one feels feels right, feels fair, feels honest. Yeah, it does. I tried to, I mentioned to Kevin Gorg how I demanded an apology and he said, no, you're not following the script. He's like, it's not yeah. that easy. I need you to get your head in the game. I did pick Toronto yesterday, but I did say it was going to be a close game. I just kind of felt, I was like, oh, Toronto was going to come out guns a blazing after falling to St. Louis on Chiefs return back to his place. But uh, yeah, and they did. I mean, it was a, it was a very good game just it not being offensively powered on either end but i'm team kevin i stand with kevin gorg but like but when i'm being successful and no. choosing no but no i just stop no but you're done there's no, no there's no true algorithm to it right now because i've guessed correctly in both instances like i've done the literally done the reverse jinx and i've done the regular one there's jessica no, it's uh, luck algorithm. no it's not you're getting the Jessica now. It's luck. You are the kiss of death. You're getting oh. cocky. You're getting ahead of yourself. You're done. No, that's not fun. No, I it is. Be, I just need to be right. No, you don't. Oh, God, <laughs> you I need do. to just, in the words of Kevin Gorg, stick to the script. Let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. Let's see how I feel. I'm not impressed. Mm, well, some people are. Okay. Me. <laughs> that doesn't count <laughs> oh my goodness oh, beautiful that's gonna do it for this week's episode of bar down beauties you're two very happy elated co i'm hosts. smiling we're smiling we're loving it it's great it's gonna be a good week um shout out to everybody though too that came out to our first buttes live of the year at tom reeds ahead of a minnesota wild victory in pittsburgh a ton of fun we had marcus felino and jewel erickson autograph giveaways which we love we'll have more giveaways at our next show stay tuned to social media there will be one at the end of this month ahead of another road trip game date to be released very very soon um and as always shout out to soda stick talk north green belt royal credit union livia and jim beam on behalf of kirsten crawl and myself, Jesse Pierce. You guys are the best. Mwah. Have a great rest of your week. Yeah, I did kind of. I just have one more thing to say. Marlo, sleep with one eye open. I'm coming for you. Yeah, no, I'll definitely keep Marlo's number on file um, for when I need a replacement. No. So, don't worry, Marlo. You're in. <laughs> no. We got you. We got you. Uh, you're done. <laughs> you're done. Maybe Clip. you sleep with one eye open as well. Clip. I already do because the back hurts so bad I can't sleep. It's a terrible thing. Well, you know what? Maybe sleep with two eyes open then. <laughs> um, you never know when I'm going to strike. And apparently it's coming soon. <laughs> it feels like it's coming I soon. I welcome it. will destroy you. Get them while they're down back. bad. Uh -huh. AKA you and your back because you can't Yeah, really you're stand using up, the injury so. to your bed. This is like what people are doing to Ryan Hartman. He's got a mangled hand and they're just hacking the hell out of him. You know what? No one ever said you play fair. Life's not fair. And they just keep handing you more life. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, you've had enough life. Nope, here's some more. Nope. Shout out to Theo Vaughn for that one if you haven't heard it. It's hilarious. Thank you. Oh, I'm falling like, Here's apart. more life. You think you've had enough life? You'll never have enough life. Nope. But nope. Shout out Theo. All right. Goodbye. Have a good week. See you later. Near, 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 near